In this video, I want to simplify a somewhat advanced edit with multiple layers and clean it up with some AI tools in Lumina Neo. And lastly, give the photo the final expression that I want it to have. If you don't own Lumina Neo, you can do most of what I'm doing in this video in either Capture One, a combination of Lightroom and Photoshop, or Affinity Photo. However, Lumina Neo does have a few features that are worth considering. If you want to pick up your own version of Lumina Neo, you can do it via the link down in the description. And this video is also sponsored by Lumina Neo. And remember, Lumina Neo, just as all other different editing softwares, is a tool that you can use and you can use it in the way you want to. You can also ignore some of the features while you can benefit from others. So we are here in Lumina Neo and I've simply just opened the folder with all my raw photos from my recent trip to Iceland. And the one photo I want to make, if we can just go all the way down here, is here. So I want to combine a few different photos here. As you can see, I have taken some foreground photos here with some streaks in the water and I want to combine that with a fast shutter speed photo of the background waterfall right here. The reason for this is that I generally prefer to make fast shutter speed photos of large waterfalls so that you can see the individual water particles. It helps convey the size of the waterfall much better. However, for the foreground, I like to make a short long exposure so you do get those streaks but still have some texture in the water. In that way you minimize the chaos of the water that is very close to the camera. By combining these two photos I get the best of two worlds. So if you want to learn even more about composition and how I compose photos like this, be sure to get my ebooks. They have minimal text, plenty of examples and are very easy to read. There are links to those down in the description of this video. So I've already selected some of the photos I want to combine. This one right here with this one right here. And then we also need a fast shutter speed photo, which is going to be this one. I've already made a combination, so you can see what I'm aiming for is something like this right here, but I'll show you now how to do that. So let's open this photo first, just double click on it. We just ignore presets and go directly to edit. Now it's very important that when you edit in Lumina Neo that you go to the developer module first, this one right here in the essentials tab. You can see there's a little raw text right here. That means we are now editing the raw photo. So we can do quite a lot with this. Just up the shadows here, add some contrast. So now I have a background that is somewhat what I want it to be. And remember, it's very important that we do this first. Now we go up to our layer properties, and then we go over to this layers tab, and then we open at new layers. I have already found my two photos that I want to use. You simply just load the photos, go into whatever folder they're located in, and simply just load them individually. So we take one first here and add another, this one right here. So now we have three photos layered up. Now, as you can see, it starts out by being opacity 50%. So let's just increase those. Now, obviously, I'm not going to use this entire photo. I just want this area down here. But as with the other photo, I just want to go in and add a little bit of contrast to that foreground. And likewise, I do that with this photo down here that you can't see right now. So let's put it up on top and add contrast to that one too. The next we want to do is to go in and mask in the part of the photo I want to use. So I just go into masking. I choose my brush. I choose size, softness, strength, and I simply just paint on top of the photo where I want to use it. There we go. So now I have painted in this top photo and I'm only using a part of this photo right here. So remember, I'm working in layers. So what you're seeing now is if we go into my mask actions, so you can see here, show, I'm only showing the red part of the top layer. And then underneath, I have the other more slow shutter speed photo. And this was here where I confused myself. 
when I continued masking these photos, I forgot which layer I was working on. And in the process of going back, control set, I confused myself even more. So I had to kind of start over. And in that process, I forgot to add the smart contrast on the different layers. So as you will see here, when we change, we change into a less contrasty photo, but you will see later in this edit that I do add the contrast back in, just so you don't get confused that I suddenly lost a lot of contrast in the edit. Usually when we make these kind of YouTube editing tutorials, it is quite common that we don't show these mistakes, but they happen to us professionals too. So don't worry if you confuse yourself in an editing process. It happens to us too. We usually just don't show it. <laughs> All right, so the next thing we do is we go down and take the next layer and we go to masking, go to brush, and then we paint in the part of this layer we need to use. So we want to take the softness very far down because we need to be a little bit more precise here, ah, maybe a little bit up. And then we go to paint, make sure that paint is selected, not erase, paint. We make sure we are on this layer. And then we paint it in. And as you can see here underneath, we now reveal our base photo here. So let's just go in and paint like this here. Good. And now you can see that we have the top part here, which is this area. And then we have the middle part. If you go to brush, mask actions and show, then you can see what we have brushed in. And we may need to go in and be a little bit more precise here because we still want to have this area up here masked in. So we go to brush again and we simply just paint in a little bit more. Again, make sure that you are on the middle layer right here. And we do like this and here. Over here we also want, and let's zoom into this area here with the water. We technically do not need this area over here. So let's just erase this part here with the stones, just so we don't have some weird combinations of layers and masks. Now we have a fairly good combination of these three photos. It looks a little bit odd over here, and it's probably the top layer where I've added in a little bit too much. So let's go to masking, brush, and start to erase this part here over here. May also be the middle part. Let's just take this one, masking, brush. No, it was the top part. It just loaded afterwards. A little bit of a downside to this program that it loads so late. <laughs> but let's just erase this area here too. And actually maybe paint in a little bit more. There we go. So we get that long exposure effect over there. And now we can also go in on our individual different layers and also make sure that they are as we want them to be. So let's add a little bit more contrast right here. Remember to check if your developer module is still editing in RAW. And the middle one here, somewhat like that. And the bottom part here in our developer med module, something like this here. Pretty good. So now we have made a blend of these three layers. Again, you can do this both in Photoshop and Affinity Photo, basically any editor where you can work in layers. It takes a little bit of getting used to when you come from Photoshop, or if you used Photoshop before, and then using Lumina Neo, but it's all about making sure that you have selected the right layer and then you go into the layer properties and jump a little bit back and forward. But I have to be completely honest, it took me a little while to get completely used to working on these layers a little bit back and forward. I needed to watch extra tutorials also on YouTube about Lumina Neo to make sure I got this one correct. <laughs> so now we can hop back to our catalog and you can see here is our photo. Now, here comes the interesting, the newly developed stuff in Lumina Neo. And I'm going to go over here because we want to remove all these tourists. And no, I do not want to use generative erase. Personally, I've tried it a little bit back and forward. I honestly did not like the results, but 
I found that generative swap worked really, really well. And this is the same kind of thing as Photoshop has just released, or Adobe has just released with Photoshop, generative fill or something like that. However, you can use this to clean up your photo really, really nicely. So that's what we're going to do. Now, it is important for me to emphasize that for this specific photo, I got the best results with generative swap. However, the engineers at Skylum generally suggest to try out with generative erase before using generative swap when it comes to erasing stuff in the photos. So maybe try generative erase before trying generative swap. Generally, remember, these are tools and they're fairly newly developed tools. So my suggestion as a user would be to just try a lot of different things and see what works the best for you. So I just loaded it and it just takes a little while for Luna Neo to load. And there we go. So now we can zoom in and let's start by removing the people over here. So you can see over here, generative swap, select, deselect. We just choose how big our brush is. And let's just start with removing these tourists right here. I want to keep this guy standing right there because it looks cool for the size. And down here, once we have selected what we want to select, we just write the prompt that we want to happen. So I just write, remove the people in this area and keep the background. So something like this. And then you just hit swap. Now it takes a little bit of time for Lumina Neo to do this process because it has to upload this to the cloud then it changes it, and then you need to download it. So you need an internet connection to be able to use this feature in Lumina Neo. And there we go. I actually find that to be really, really good. So reset selection, and we just take the next guy right here and swap him. Great. So as you can see, the noise reduction and the noise reduction here are a little bit different, but we will fix that later. Let's zoom into these people here and I'll just speed this part up because it will take a little bit of time and we don't have time for that in this tutorial. Alrighty, so I would say that's a pretty good cleanup. If you are dissatisfied with some of the cleanups, you can always try again. You can change the selection part a little bit. And I found that actually makes quite a significant difference. So it's a little bit about playing around with this. Now, if you are an experienced Photoshop user, you should be able to do something like this relatively fast with the different cleaning tools. Some of those I teach about in my big Photoshop for landscape photographers post-processing course. But let's continue with this one. So we just hit save. So so great. Now we have a photo that has come into this folder called Generative Creations, which is a TIFF file. So right now we can just double click on it and go to edit and simply just finish it up in the way that we like. First off, I definitely want to crop this photo down to something like this right here. And we just want it to be straight, something like this there. You can also see down here in the development tool, as we have down here in the essentials, because we are now on a TIFF file, we no longer have our raw way of editing. What you can also see if we go down to this one and we increase our contrast and we do some exposure correction right there. Let's also go down and add some... Let's see, what do we want? Some mystical, I really like this effect in Lumina Neo, something like this. It adds both glow and contrast at the same time that I quite like. Now, if you want to change these things here, if we go back up to development, you can see it has kind of reset. Then you go into your edits. You have tools and you have edits. And down here, you can see the edits that we have done. So here is the development, and you can also see that if we go down to a lower layer, then you do not see the layers, the edits above that thing. So we can add a little bit more contrast if we want, and then go back up to mystical, and then we can see the mystical effect again. And now we go back into our tools section. What I also want is that I want to up the shadows of this area right here. 
So since it's only that area, we go into the masking, choose our brush, and then we just brush in where we want to up the shadows. Go back into adjustments and see if we want to add a little bit more. There we go. I also want to maybe add some atmosphere to that area right there. It actually looks pretty cool just upping the atmosphere, but let's say I only want to add it right there. We do the same thing, go into masking, brush, and simply just brush in where we want this effect. There we go, maybe a little bit here on the other side of the waterfall too. Really cool. So we can also go down and you can see here in our glow, add some glow instead of soft focus. I like to go to Orton Effect Soft, just add a little bit of that. You can also just go to this one here. We don't want to overdo it either. And I can see each time I add glow, it also becomes quite bright. So let's go back into our Edits tab, choose our Development right here and just decrease the exposure a little bit more. There we go. I quite like that. And maybe go back into edits here and just let's take this development here. Maybe bring those shadows a little bit more down because I found them to be a little bit too bright. There we go. So I think we're getting there. I want to add a little bit more glow to this blown out sky because generally blown out skies are not super duper interesting. So I'm just going to make some glow, add some glow up there and choose my masking. This time I want to do a radial gradient and then I simply just add it in here on top. Maybe not that much. There we go. And now we should have some glow up there. If we go into our edits, we can turn it on and off. You can see what it's doing right there. So now we have some glow. So since we have this blown out sky, I would rather want to use it rather than it's just there. In that way, adding some glow actually adds a lot of interest. So I also promised that we would clean up this section right here. That was where some of those people stood. And I don't think that the program was super good at cleaning that up. So let's go down to our clone. We could principally also use the dodge and burn, but let's just use cloning. So we hold down option on a Mac to select where we want to take from. And then we just add in a little bit there, a little bit here, not too much. Want to bring down the strength a little bit because it's a little bit over the top. So again, hold down alt or option and just paint in where we want to fix this. All the option over, let's take some here and just paint in on top here just to brighten it up ever so slightly. On and off, you can see much better than before. Not perfect, but much better than before. We also zoomed in quite a lot, so you'll probably not see it if you zoom out. So from here, you can just add effects on top again and again and again, as much as you personally like. Five minutes later. So I always find it important that you take a break from editing your photos, go away, do something else, and then you can come back and then you can see if there's something you want to change here in the end. I can see I've missed out on a dust spot right here. So what we can do is we take our erase tool and Lumina Neo has this very cool, unique feature called remove dust spots. So we just hit that one and then the program analyze the entire photo and just removes the dust spots or whatever it, it interprets to be dust spots. And we can see before and after by holding down this eye icon right here and you can see it didn't remove anything but this little dust spot down here. Furthermore, I do find that I think that the background cliffs right here are a little bit too bright to my liking. So I'll just reduce the shadows here quite a bit, something like this. I actually think it also improves the foreground, but let's just go in and then start masking in what we like. So strength, let's reduce it a little bit. Softness, good. The size, we can make it a little bit bigger brush. And then we just start painting in where we want this effect. Like this here. 
So we can see before and after. We can paint in more for sure, like this. And also down here in the water. Let's avoid the highlights, but let's make these shadow areas here darker. So we can see before and after. We made it a little bit darker. I actually think the background here can be even darker. So let's just make a new development. So I just head it down to one of the other essential tools and it just resets it. So let's bring down the exposure a little bit more. Maybe add some contrast. Bring the shadows down a little bit more. It's just so we overall bring even more contrast into the photo. And let's use our brush again. A little bit larger brush. Let's just keep it on 100% strength this time. And just paint in this effect right here in the background. There we go. So you can see before and after. Maybe we want to erase a little bit in this area here. There we go. So we don't, so we do keep this atmospheric area right there. I think I like this. There we go. And if you don't want to work with the light part here, we can always go down and maybe use some curves and bring down the midtones there too. I actually think I like that even better. Let's just go into masking again. It's the same mask. Paint in. And then we can bring down the size. I just want to make sure that we also brought it down here. That was too much. Control set to go back. But just here on these stones, because they looked quite bright. And maybe erase it here with the water. It's quite a strong effect we have added, so we need to be a little bit precise where we mask it in. There we go. I can also see here in the water. Some of it is more cold and bluer, whereas other parts of the water are warmer. So you can actually see here, and it's because of the stones underneath the water, but I do think I prefer to be a little bit warmer out here where you see it's cold. So let's just go to race and then go back to develop. And let's go down to color. Then let's up the temperature a little bit, just a little bit here. And then go into masking, brush, and then start brushing in where we can see that the water has this more cold and blue tone. So something like this there. Maybe a hair bit there, no too much. But down here in the corner too, maybe a little bit here. So now we have made it a little bit warmer in those areas. We can think I should erase... Maybe this part here became a little bit too brownish. And of course, we can bring down the strength. And maybe erase a bit here where it already is warm. Good. And of course, you can always go back to adjustments. Go down to the temperature and change it however you like. But be moderate in how you make these changes. If you're in doubt about some of the edits you have made, again, you just jump back into edits. And we have made some of these developments here. We can bring down maybe the exposure even more of the background here, if we prefer that. And so forth, all the way down through all the different developments we have done. If we go down to this, so this glow one here, we can even bring that down a little bit more. So instead of having it all the way up here, just bring it back down a little bit. And we can go back on the top and it just takes a moment for the program to load all the different developments and stack them on top of each other. I would say that's one of the downsides to Lumina Neo is that it is a little bit slow when it comes to loading all these edits that you're making here in the edits tab. And you go down and you change one of the parameters further down here. So overall, did I manage to make the photo a little bit too dark still? I'm not entirely sure. But the good thing is I can always make a new adjustment, something like this here. And again, in this way, you can just keep editing, editing, editing and going back and forward with your photo. So let's say we are satisfied with the photo. We can go into file. Export, 
And here we can export it as a JPEG to whatever folder we want to export it to. Remember to save it as sRGB if you intend to upload it to the web or to Instagram. sRGB works for the web. Not Adobe RGB, it's a printer setting. Profoto, it's a printer setting. You have to export it as sRGB if you intend to upload it to a homepage, to Instagram, or somewhere else on the web. And then just save it. So Lumina Neo can do so much more than what I've shown just here, such as making your photos sharper, fixing noise, all sorts of different things. It just takes too long to show all of it. If you want to learn even more about editing, be sure to check out my Photoshop for Landscape Photographers post-processing course. So I hope you learned something, got some inspiration, and if you want to pick up a copy of Lumina Neo yourself, you can do so down in the description of this video.